hey, in the studio now is friend of the show, and he's and he's become a friend too. He he hangs out with Parker and me sometimes. It's uh, the legendary smiles, Chris Coleman. You might see him over there on a Facebook page, and he's the guy that uh, made the song, uh, the new Jim Crow. That Hi one right guys. here. Yeah, <laughs> smiles. It's always a pleasure. No, no thanks for having me in. I, I wanted I wanted you to come in here today because uh, mm-hmm. you know I got a lot of black friends. You, you're one of them, and. Uh, Everybody I talk to, whether it's a black friend of mine or some caller, some black guy that calls in on the show over the last couple of weeks, to a man, right? every one of them, Chris Coleman, thinks that uh, George Zimmerman should go to jail for the murder of Trevon Martin, no matter what the evidence says. And that's, uh, our, so do you agree you're black? Well, I think, I think most way. of them are just looking for justice, not necessarily uh, criminal justice, so to speak, but justice for the whole entire situation. Like, when er, all the black callers that I've heard complain, they weren't talking about the legality of the situation. They were just talking about the boneheadedness yeah. of the situation. They felt like the situation could have been avoided. So George Zimmerman, a co-worker, told me this. Like, he believes that... Um, George Zimmerman may be not guilty of what they're trying to accuse him of, but he sh- still should be held accountable for just the, uh, uh, the actions that had transpired because it was just ridiculous. It could have been avoided. There was mistakes on both sides, and that's what I think that's what black people are looking for. They're just looking for some sort of, I, I guess, a gut feeling is like justice. It's like some sort of balance, uh, equality, some sort of fairness for the situation. I, I, and you make, a, you make a valid point there, mm-hmm. but just real quick, I mean, that that neighborhood had some home invasions uh, right. right before uh, that that encounter happened. Uh, Zimmerman was the neighborhood watchman, and it's not illegal to keep an eye on someone. Mm-hmm. And you know that it's not illegal to get out of a car, but it is illegal to just start pummeling someone who you think quote unquote disrespected you. And all the evidence right now is showing that's what happened. Well, yeah. If uh, <laughs> if Trayvon Martin is proved to be the aggressor, I think you know uh, George Zimmerman should be let off. But at the same time. I don't think that's going to sit well with people because it's, it's, it's more of a morality sort of ethical thing, a conscious, so to speak. I don't think they're looking at it from a legal perspective when they get upset or when they're uh, ranting and raving about the justice they want for Trayvon. Like, yeah. uh, for me personally, the justice I want is awareness of the situation. Like, I don't want any criminal justice. If George Zimmerman is proved to be uh, is, is proved not to be the aggressor and it was self-defense, if they can prove it and he's acquitted, I still believe that we should take this situation and see, uh, you know, uh, um, sort of have a, a mind frame that people in the future, when they're caught in a certain situation, to step back and look at it as a whole. Because when I think about the situation as a whole, there was mistakes on both uh, parties. Uh, Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman yeah. just made a bunch of bad decisions. So the just as I want is for people to realize, hey, look, look at a situation objectively. Don't jump to conclusions. Let's not rush to judgment. And just kind of think about your next action. That's what I take from it. If you were, if you were listening to the show earlier mm-hmm. in the week, uh, we were playing some of the old Dave Chappelle show clips. Whether he was a black guy on the witness stand <laughs> and whether it was Michael Jackson or whether, whether it was uh, uh, the, the, the R. Kelly. Right. He, my, he literally said, O.J., you know, my blackness my won't black, let me say They're that. all innocent. I remember you know? that. I and that's funny how he did that skit <laughs> six or seven years ago. And I, I always thought that the Chappelle show was the funniest well, show I've ever seen on it's television. It's true for the and most now, part. Now playing itself out now. <laughs> no, it's true for the most part. Most people, uh, most black people in the black community do have a collective thought process. They blindly follow each other. You know, I guess we kind of need that in a certain extent, but I can see where it could become a detriment. We all, uh, Some people feel like if you don't think like the whole, you're an outcast and you're not, quote unquote, real. You're not real. You're not one of us. Yeah, you're you a know? sellout. You're whatever the case is. <laughs> right, be. Oreo, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, that's Chris Coleman, the legendary Smiles. Hangs out with us up here sometimes and hangs out with us when we're not here as well sometimes. We'll get a couple of pops in an hour or so after the show, Coleman. Right. So coming up next, it's uh, Jim Varney from NOLA.com, the Times PQ and the paper boy. He comes in every uh, Friday for the last hour of the show. We go over the week's big headlines. And WDSU's Rachel Wolf, I believe, will be coming in here as well, hanging out with us too. Stick around. A lot to do in the last hour. John Osterlin here with you on Rush Radio 99.5 WRNO.